We're glad to greet all of you tonight in the name of Christ, particularly uh, Brother Roger and your family. We're very grateful to have you here. We greet those of you who have joined us on live stream also. Your presence means a lot to us. I believe some of you here are familiar with Brother Ravenhill in the past. Brother Roger back there personally met Brother Ravenhill. That, that ought to tell you quite a bit just yeah. right there. <laughs> mm -hmm. This will be our 52nd exposition of the book of Amos. We're nearing the end of this book. Following this, we'll give an exposition of the book of Jude. And then we'll commence... Uh, a lengthy exposition of the Gospel of John. We're going to be in Amos 9, verses 5 and 6. Um, I think most of you are familiar with Amos, but the language is a uh, harsh, harsh language. We would prefer that God doesn't have to speak like this uh, to you. We would prefer that he didn't have to to anyone. In fact, God would prefer that he didn't have to speak this way. But this is God's reaction to corrupt religion. Because this is addressed to his people. <coughs> Amos 9, 5, and 6. And the Lord God of hosts is he that toucheth the land, and it shall melt, and all that dwell therein shall mourn, and it shall rise up wholly like a flood, and shall be drowned, as by the flood of Egypt. It is he that buildeth his stories in the heaven, and hath founded his troop in the earth. He that calleth for the waters out of the sea, and poureth them out upon the face of the earth, the Lord is his name. Amen. <clears throat> now throughout history, it's been very difficult for men, even religious men, to receive that it is God with whom we have to do. This has been a very difficult thing for man to learn. As Hebrews 4.13, it is God, mm -hmm. it, you might say God alone, mm -hmm. this idea, it is God with whom we have to do. Some versions amplify this a little bit. It is God to whom we must give account. Mm -hmm. If you're concerned about what men think about you, well, you need to be thinking about what God thinks yes, about you. Yeah. Or we must all render an account to him. Now, in this text, God's going to define further who he is. Who, who is it that men are fooling around with? Yeah. Who is it that men blaspheme against? Who is it? Recently, there was a debate between a man who believed that creation was happenstance and a man that believed it was from God. Who was this negative person? Who was he retaliating against? You think it was this, uh, this Christian brother? He thought it was. It wasn't. That's why I sided with the Christian brother. It's true, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Yeah. The world and they that dwell in it. Yeah. So that's, that's the way it is. You want to get your bearings right there. Yeah. This is the truth, God, uh, that Paul proclaimed to the Athenian philosophers. He actually proclaimed God to them. He told them that God is the one that gives life and breath and all things to everybody. Yes. 
You might say, well, that's evident. No, no, this is not evident. Yeah, that's right. yeah. People have to be told this yeah, in words. Uh -huh. This has to be said. Mm -hmm. You're alive. God gave you life. Yes. You had food. God gave you food. Amen. You have breath. God gave you breath. Amen. This slips away in an academic society. This yeah. slips away. He told them, now God made the nations, and God determined when they'd live and where they'd live, Amen. and he determined their vocation, mm -hmm. that man's vocation or occupation is to try and find God. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, that can't be done. Well, that's got to be done. Yeah. What do you mean it can't? What do you mean it can't be done? This is what God's ordained that it be done. Yeah. Because he's not far from every one of us. Yes. Then he told them that men live and move and have their being in God. He also apprised them that God has appointed a day when he's going to judge the world by the man he raised from the dead, who is Jesus Christ. These are the very things that they'd all ignored. It's the very things that have been ignored in our country and many others. See, this is staple stuff now. People have to live with this in mind. You can't live with your job in mind, or your school in mind, or your family in mind. You can't do this. They all come under this other priority. If you haven't settled that other priority, whoever you set your mind on doesn't count anything before God. It's first got to be set your priority before God. Yes. Find God. Please God. Live for God. Don't aggravate God. Don't provoke Amen. God. Please God. Yeah. Then you can get down to the other things. Yeah, yeah. yeah but Israel had ignored all these things. Yeah. See, they did what Stephen told the council they did. They stopped their, yes. he stopped their ears. Mm -hmm. Harden their hearts. Amen. Now, in our time, there's a few people that are lifting up the trumpet, but it seems like they're getting fewer and fewer. Yeah. We've got an awful lot of Indian rubber theology afoot in the land and spiritual panty waste that are afraid to say anything, and the more and more of these kind of people are surfacing. They got nice, pleasant smiles on their faces, and they are helping the poor, you know, raking yards and things like this. But uh, I'm telling you, this is not what the world needs. Yeah, amen, amen. Yes. Um, I was considering we were talking about that. Our um, priorities and everything needs to be set on Yay. what the Lord, what pleases Him. Mm -hmm. And I was considering um, when you see a flock of sheep with their shepherd, the shepherd leaves the flock where they are to eat and where they are to sleep. Yeah. And if the flock stray from the shepherd, then they will eat in dangerous areas yeah. because sheep just can't eat anything. Mm -hmm. There's specific things that the shepherd knows what they're supposed to eat, and if they stray from him, they could die. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, in our time, unlike Israel, we've been given much more. Oh, yeah. Amen. Yeah. This is a day when there's been a way, a new and a living yeah. way has been opened up to God. God has lavished his grace upon the people, poured forth his spirit abundantly on the people that are regenerate. So now more is expected of them. Yes, amen. If God spoke this way to Israel, who was given relatively a small amount, yep. per, well, I'm almost afraid to think of what he's saying to this generation. Yes, if there was an apostle or a prophet from God to turn up, and I think there has been from time to time prophets turn up, uh -huh. they all speak the same way. Yeah words of warning, mm -hmm. stark warning. Now, concerning our text, this is not a warning. Right. Israel's beyond yeah. being warned. Mm -hmm. They were warned for centuries, and he stopped their ears. Now this is a 
prophecy. There's a pro there's a difference between a prophecy and a warning. Yeah, a prophecy is something that's settled. It's going to happen. A warning is trying to st try to stop this from yeah. happening. So let's look at this text. It's got some peculiar language in it. Now Na Amos, in this text that we just read, he's going to proclaim the omnipotence of God. Mm -hmm. That God does what he wants, when he wants, where he wants, and to who he wants, and nobody can stay his hand. Amen. Remember there when John in the Isle of Patmos, he heard a great multitude cry out, The Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Yeah, yeah that voice is still going out. Yeah. Amen. It may not look like he is, but he is. Yeah. He's reigning in the midst of all these heathen. Job confessed, I know thou canst do everything. That's a Job. He didn't have a Bible. There was no Bible. <laughs> he didn't have a Bible. He used it at a time by Abraham. There wasn't any Bible. What a shame that there's a Bible now and some people still don't know this. There's no excuse for this. None at all. Job confessed to God, I know that you can do everything. Isaiah said, trust in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah there is everlasting strength. See, so they, these, they take them back to God. Jesus said, with God all things are possible. Amen. Well, Amen. Let's get our bearings here. Uh -huh. But this is not enough to know theoretically. or to intellectually assent to this. So you, yep, all right, that's the way it is. That's what we believe. We believe that too. That's in our creed. We got that in our, in our bylaws. Everybody here has to believe this. That's not what we're talking about here. The doubter does not believe this. That's right. Person who doubts how the world come into existence, yeah. he doesn't believe this. Yeah. Person that doubts that his holiness is essential, he doesn't believe this. See, the pleasure seeker, he doesn't believe this. In practicality, Israel had denied this. They lived just as though there were no God, was no God. The Lord of Hosts is He wants to identify Himself. The Lord of Hosts. The Lord God of hosts, that's who we're talking about here. In other words, you see, the Lord of armies. <laughs> well, see, it's, when you don't know God, and someone tells you you're accountable to God, and God will just say, they don't, they don't believe this, it doesn't mean anything to them, but God's got armies. Yes, amen. He doesn't need armies. He can wave his hand, but that, that'd do away with the people. There wouldn't be anything left. Yeah. All God has to do is show up, and there's nothing left. Yeah. A fire goes before him and consumes his enemies. So God just walked on the scene. That settles a whole bunch of issues right yeah. there. Amen. He's a whole Lord of hosts. There, there are, there's a hierarchy of powers, unseen powers. There's spiritual, but spiritual doesn't mean they're not real. Right. They have another, another order. There's principalities and powers in heavenly places. I gather they're like over regions and this sort of thing. There's, we've got that sort of thing. And there are archangels. That's some sort of higher, higher level. When Jesus comes, there's an archangel. He's going to prepare the way. Yeah. Archangel. I'm, I'm, see, I'm not sure what an archangel is, but it sounds pretty big. There are angels, they have charge of other angels, Michael and his angels. Uh, yeah. See, it's, it's, I'm showing here that Lord of hosts, what kind of, what we're talking about hosts, we're not talking about just like a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. I'm, sometimes you had to be a church, a large church here recently, just to last, just the weekend. The world's biggest church in America, the United States' biggest church was robbed. Mm. Yeah of the morning offering, which was half a million dollars. We haven't quite come up to that yet. 
Now, they had a lot of people, but they wouldn't be called hosts. They had probably just a handful of people that were significant type people, but these hosts, these are all. Yeah. There's no insignificant people in God's uh, personalities and God's host. He's the Lord of hosts. Yeah. Hosts. There are angels that are over elements. Yeah. Revelation speaks up about an angel that was over fire. He could he could do things with fire that nobody else could do. Another angel, he was given power to scorch men with fire. Mm -hmm. There's also, according to Daniel 4.35, the army of heaven, which kind of st kind of staggering to consider yeah. <laughs> how many. It's just what the angels are called 10,000 times 10,000. That's a way of saying we don't know how many, but it's just beyond counting. There, there is in the number table of numbers. There isn't anything to cover how many angels there are. But this is, he's called. They're called hosts. Uh -huh. All this variety of hosts. And he's God. So I'm the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. I got trouble on the earth. I just dispatch a host. Yeah. Why well, one of my angels can wipe, completely wipe out a single army of 185,000 yeah. soldiers? W one of my one of my hosts can do that. When I wanted to lead Israel into Canaan, I just said one angel did. One angel did that. Uh -huh. Said he's a Lord of hosts. Yeah. So this is the God see that Israel's been tampering with. That's right. They forgot this. That this is who he was. He's got. Uh, he gave him also employ Satan and his hosts. Mm -hmm. They operate under yeah. under God. He'll employ them to say sin, strong delusion. Oh. He'll employ yeah. them. Yeah, well, given. Now, you know, we talked tonight about some people that are being persecuted. Yes, but see, if their captors only knew oh, yeah. that, see, they're reigning. That's right. Now, they may not seem that way now, but when Christ was dying on the cross, he was reigning. That's right. He was, he, he, you know, that, <laughs> that's right, cross. amen. In his cross. Yes. It is weak. At his weakest hour, he defeated the Satan's host at his weakest hour. Amen. Well, you can only imagine what he can do now. But see, the the church has got to get close enough to God for God to work on their behalf. Yes, amen. God is not honored by working among ignorant, unempowered people. He doesn't get glory. The people that do it get the glory. There was... Some of us around the world, we're just we're rep, rep, you, we're representative of a few of them, but some of God's people, the people of real league of God in the world, know that God can work in such a manner as there's no question who did it. Yes, when Ananias and Sapphira, their, God shrinked up the early church by two people. Yeah. Everybody got scared. Yeah. Right. Some people refute. They wouldn't join themselves to the disciples. They said, "Whoa, <laughs> we're not going there." Mm -hmm. You can imagine the church marquee that said, "Liars drop dead during the service." Yeah. Yeah. Of course, most churches aren't close enough to God for that even to happen. Mm -hmm. If that was the case, it'd probably just one or two people be left. You know. Yeah. Consider the situation. Where all of these powers, Lord of hosts, where all of these powers are aligned against a people. They just, just ponder it. It's frightening yeah. to ponder it. The Lord of hosts, that's what he's telling him. He's telling him, when I'm aligned against you, all these hosts, yeah. they're aligned against you too. And if I dispatch them, they're not going to do good to you. Yeah. The Lord of hosts. All of these powers at every level. They're against those that are against God. Believe me, you want these for you. Amen. Amen. If God be for us, who could be against us? Well, on the other hand, if God's against us, who could be for us? Yeah. Now, here's what he says. He, that's the Lord of hosts now, he... He toucheth the land, and it shall melt. <laughs> you want to see how much power you got? Touch something and see what happens. 
Go ahead, touch it, see what happens. Most of the time, it'll, it'll hurt you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> he touches the land and it melts. Who can melt the earth with a touch? The Jerusalem Bible says. In some verse it reads, he touches the earth and it shakes. Takes hold of the land and causes it to shake. And that Bible says he touches the earth and it dissolves. Just There's a song, Touch Me, you know. He touched me. Well, in redemption, he does. Boy, it's only in redemption. You don't want God to be touching if you're not in Christ. If you're not in Christ, you don't want God touching you. He touches the earth, it melts. That's the God we're talking about now. This is the God we're talking about that they had agitated. The word melt means to cause to melt, to soften, dissolve, dissipate. The idea is... He touches it and it begins to deteriorate right away. Yeah. Breaks down right away. Yeah. Defenses go right away. Strength goes right away. Yeah. Abilities go right away. It's, it's the kind of God. We, and we're talk, we talk about the earth. Uh -huh. To say nothing of an individual. This is the earth. See what he did in, in Eden. when he could, all, all creation was consigned to mortality. He just... Touch the earth, and it begin to, <laughs> yeah. it begin to dissipate. Right. Yeah, brother Gibbons, this is the one that you've already mentioned. That Stephen said who, that you do always resist. Yeah. That people dare to resist this guy. See, mm -hmm. uh, see, I don't mean just to say too much about this, but if the church is what it ought to be and what it can be in Christ. These aggressors would be afraid. Yes, amen. Yes. But the reason they're not afraid, because the weak church is so weak uh -huh. and lifeless that it doesn't see any threat at all. Uh -huh. yeah. It can pass a law that they can't pray in Jesus' name. It, it, nobody rides them to, I don't know, I don't think we should do that. Yeah. Nobody does that. Yeah. Why, it's weak. Yeah. See, there's a there's all kind of penalties people pay for being weak. Yeah. Weak in the faith. There's all kind of things that come along because people are weak in the faith. It's, it strengthens Satan's cause. Mm -hmm. It opens more avenues for him. It puts people at a greater distance from the God. Mm -hmm. It puts them up further from help. It puts them further from grace. He touches the land, it shall melt, and all they that dwell in shall mourn. So that, in other words, everyone's going to know what happened. When Israel went into captivity, they knew what had happened. Yeah, that's right. But it was it was too late. Yeah. But they knew what had happened. They mourned. They mourned. It, this is even on an individual level. On an individual level. Mm -hmm. People that drift from God, there comes a time when they know what they've done. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Maybe it's too late. Maybe it's not. That's up, up, up to God. But they know, oh boy, I should never have done that. They mourn. But blessed are they that mourn. Yes. Yeah, amen. They shall mourn. Men appear to have a lot of confidence when they're away from the Lord. God can arrange things so they won't have confidence yeah. Yeah. anymore. God touches the earth and everything connected with it comes crashing down. It shall rise up holy or completely like a flood. This parallels what's said in Amos 8, which is a reference to the river of Egypt that overflowed its banks. Mm -hmm. and then in time it came back, but it left a lot of debris. Mm. Yeah. Huh. When a flood goes back, it leaves a lot of debris. Yeah, right. Stuff that like died uh -huh. in the flood or couldn't survive the flood, was washed up on the shore. It's what he said, my wrath I touch the earth, it's going to be like a f sudden flood arises. It's going to wash away all the debris. Now, at the time Amos wrote, Israel was guilty of idolatry. After the Babylonian captivity, they never were guilty of it again. Hmm? That's something. What happened? Flood came up, washed idolatry away, left the debris. 
with all their feelings, they didn't worship idols anymore. No one could stop the rise of the wrath of God anymore. They could stop the rising of the Nile. They couldn't stop it. God's wrath had deteriorated a long time, and the people had interpreted long suffering as tolerance and approval. I mean, they could look how many people are turning up at Bethel every year, and we have the feast and worship the golden calf. Well, what a feast that was. Did you know how all the people flocked in there? And the prophets told us about things are going to go all well. No one's going to come against the nation. We're not going into captivity. And we had a good, we had our version of Joel Olstein, and he was telling us how good everything was. Rose up like a flood. Yes. They thought that God wasn't good, couldn't do something like this, because for centuries it didn't look, uh -huh. it didn't look like God would do this. It looked it looked like God was approving of what they were doing, but He wasn't. The words of Second Chronicles, thirty six sixteen are very telling. Here's what they say: They mocked the messengers of God and despised His words and misused His prophets until the wrath of the Lord rose against his people, till there was no remedy. Yes, amen. Now some of us think we, if, we're not, if we haven't reached the stage, that stage here in our country, we're getting close to it. All right, so this is the Lord of hosts. This is who we're dealing with here. An omnipotent God that just his touch wreaks havoc. Yes, Brother Jason. Yeah, the, on that phrase, he touches the touches the, the earth and it melts. It seems that one of the things we learn from all the prophets, not just Amos, but all the prophets, is how God uh, governs the nations of the world. Yes, amen. And one of the ways that he can judge a nation is he can touch all of the resources. That's right. mm -hmm. Whether they be financial, yeah. he can, God can take away things that man trusts in. Very good. Uh -huh. all, Very all of the, good. the see the earth. The earth is the most stable thing we know. That's mm -hmm. right. It never moves. It orbits the sun in a particular yeah. orbit. It, it never moves. Once in a while, there's an earthquake or something like that. But the earth itself yeah. is stable. So God touching the earth and the earth melting. It's like He's taking away. What appears to man to be stable. That's right. So Amen. That's, that's one of the ways that he judges that he judges the nation still today. Amen. This is what this is how he does it. Amen. That's why I see when there's areas of the world that are captured by famine. Mm -hmm. Now it's not that it's wrong to try and help those. Mm -hmm. To, mm -hmm. Oh, in the scriptures, the relief was always sent to the brethren. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no global relief programs described in the scripture unless it was Joseph. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then he sold corn. He didn't give it away yeah. to other nations. Mm -hmm. God's, God's omnipotent. Now, this, that's what I say. now let's see what he says he does. These are some things he does. He that buildeth his stories in the heavens. That's stories like levels, not, not like books. Other versions, and here the translators, they went a little flaky on us here. And they, they let the lexicons guide them instead of their understanding. But they said, his, his layers in the sky, his chambers in the heaven. His lofty palace in the heavens. He makes his he makes his rooms in heaven. His ascension into heaven, the Douay version. His spheres in the heaven. He builds stairs up to heaven. That's God's word Bible. That's rich, isn't it? He builds his ascent up to the sky. That's a Septuagint. Upper rooms of his palace in heaven. That's a Net Bible. He builds his mansions in heaven. That's the New Jerusalem Bible. The upper stories of his home are in the heavens. That's the message. That's the Living Bible. He built his degrees in the heaven. Jubilee Bible. And his palace towers soaring high in the sky. Message Bible. What? 
you read that and say, Who, whoever translated this, let's get them out of the translation business. We, they need to go get a job at Walmart or something like that. There are people that this is the Bible they've got. Uh -huh. Says things like this. Uh -huh. I'm just going to dismiss those versions as meaningless. God's revealing his greatness to the people. Uh -huh. Something they should have known and pondered well. Now he takes people, he first he touched the earth, now he takes people up into a, a larger domain. Uh -huh. The heavens, oh, that's a bigger domain yeah. than earth is. So we, let's go up into this larger domain. What's he do up there? Well, he builds stories. I'm going to take that to mean chambers. That's what the word actually means. He, in other words, he works some plans out, and he's, he's got little, like, he is an accommodation to human frailty, I understand. Uh -huh. He's got play, he uses the heavens, different places of the heavens to work out different stages of his plans. The earth is too small to, uh, to originate, to, for, to be an area where he originates a purpose. Yes, what he's saying. Yeah. What he's saying is the earth is big to you, but it's awful little to me. Yeah. I sit on the circle of the earth. If I want to make plans, I don't go down to earth to make the plans. It's, mm -hmm. it's too small. And just so you understand, I do that in a domain that you haven't, can't even measure. Yeah. You can tell us what the, you can measure the earth, how big the circumference is and how it all is. But you can't do that the heavens. That's where I work up, this is where I have free access up here. I work up here in this area. The psalmist refers to these chambers. He says, uh, in Psalm 104.3, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters and who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind. See, that's all, that's all stuff that's outside of man's experiential domain. Yes. I don't think there's a lot of understanding about what the Bible is trying to teach us when it talks about God being in heaven. Yes. <laughs> he's not saying God's really far away out there in yeah. outer space yeah. somewhere. That isn't what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Heaven's not in outer space. Like if you got in a spaceship and you went the speed of light, you'd never make it to what he's That's talking right. about. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. When Jesus went back into heaven, he it, it, he didn't become a rocket ship. Mm -hmm. it, that's that's not what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Heaven is the control room for earth. There you are. That's there the point. You are. So whenever the Bible talks about God's in heaven or God has a throne in heaven, it's like it's like the bridge on a ship. And the idea is that God's the one in control. God's mm -hmm. the one that's behind right. the wheel. Amen. Mm -hmm. He has, he has to say it this way to, to get people out of the earth. But this is exactly the case. Heaven, heaven, it can't be described in terms of fire, water, and elements. It, it can't be. It's not of the earth's, earth's element. Jesus told his disciples that the kingdom of heaven had come, and he, he taught them to pray, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there, there you have, it's kind of like fleshed out here, but, but the will is above the, the, the plane of earth mm -hmm. as far as it's a spiritual. There are things terrestrial and there are things celestial. Mm -hmm. But again, you, you said it doesn't mean unreal. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just it's unseen to yeah, us right. until Amen. God Amen. actually causes something to happen down here that mirrors yeah. or portrays mm -hmm. what has is going on yeah. in heaven. Technically speaking, heaven doesn't have borders. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. If you want to speak, to, but because this is man can't mm -hmm. grasp that, he reduces it down to this kind of language. He speaks about the biggest, biggest thing man can think of, the universe, which is so vast it boggles the mind. Mm -hmm. It was David. It, David said, "When I behold the heavens, the work of thy hands," he says, "I, what is man that thou art mindful of him?" That's how this, that's how this region impressed impressed David. That's just the seen part yeah. of the region. 
division, a physical division, then we couldn't say that God was omnipresent. Right. That's right. That's Amen. right. Amen. Yeah. Let me add to that too that there's a, there's a sense there's a sense in which heaven and earth they they overlap That's in right. a sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, so. It, this was actually illustrated for us in the tabernacle. That's right. Mm -hmm. The tabernacle is a copy of what is in heaven. And, and the tabernacle was built so that God could dwell mm -hmm. with the people. In a sense, it was, a, it was an, an overlapping of That's heaven right. and earth mm -hmm. in the tabernacle. And, so what, when, and Jesus himself yeah. is heaven come to earth. Mm -hmm. He's Did like we, the tabernacle, the ultimate tabernacle. He said, if I was the finger of God cast out devils, the kingdom of heaven... It's here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Otherwise, Jesus wouldn't have come here. Mm -hmm. Or otherwise, we'd have like a deistic God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this God who's like way out distant yeah. somewhere. Yeah. But he's, but he's not. He's very present. Yeah, amen. It's, it's like a, it's like a curtain. It's like if we close these doors here, yeah, the other room amen. is separated. Amen. There's this curtain right now between earth and heaven, mm -hmm. like the curtain in the tabernacle. That's right. Mm -hmm. But see, like when Jesus comes, that curtain's gonna come down. He's gonna appear. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Mm -hmm. He has founded his troop in the earth. Again, other versions, I, I just give these to you so you know. He has founded his strata in the earth. That's the New King James Version. Like, what is that exactly? His vault. He's established his vault. His vaulted home is the earth. <laughs> Whoa, what? He sets his foundations on the earth. His residence, the Holman Bible says. He, this, he founded his troop in earth. It says he founds his residence in earth. The foundation of his globe of elements. And he establishes his promise on earth. See, I'm going to take the word, like the King James Version renders it, troops, because that is one of the primary meaning of the of the word this uh, in other words this is a another word for the hosts or probably a segment of the hosts yeah. of heaven lord of hosts he can locate those hosts on earth in fact jacob saw this taking place in, a, in his vision yeah. of a ladder yeah. that reached into heaven a ladder set up on earth yeah. top of it reached heaven and some of these hosts are ascending and descending <laughs> So he can set up his troops mm -hmm. on earth. Like the angels are ministers yes. to the children of God. Well, they're doing it on, on earth. Mm -hmm. He sets up his troops. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a blessed thing, you know. It's, I was thinking about that and had a little dream about it. But Lord, open my eyes so I can see the troops. Remember that uh, Gehazi? He yeah. come out. He come out, and mm -hmm. the army was gathered around Elisha. Uh -huh. Very the scripts are very careful. Tell you they were gathered around Elisha, yeah. and but around them there were some heavenly troops. <laughs> they were also Amen. gathered around Elisha, and the prophet prayed that God would open up the eyes of his servant, because yeah. they that be with our, for us are greater than they that are against us. So. Yes. God can open your eyes to yeah, see this. He can, he can open you up and understand to see that, yes, there's a lot of things that are against you. Mm -hmm. It's what we want for our brethren that are being persecuted. Yes, there are things that are against you that cannot be denied. Mm -hmm. But greater is he that's in you than he's in the world. Amen. Greater are those that are for you than those that are against you. Mm -hmm. And once you're convinced of this, you can go through these, Amen. Amen. these difficult straits. Some people are given, given great ministries to accomplish in the earth. Some some believers, yeah. some believing men, some are given to die for Christ. That's right. I mean, this is this is what they they've been given to do. Christ is with them so they can lay down their life with Him. I mean, this is who are we to say which is the greatest work? Whatever God's put in your hands, that's your greatest it's work. Your greatest work. That's right. I 
when you think of a single angel can work havoc in the earth, one angel was assigned to lead Israel into Canaan, but now think of troops. <laughs> now in revealing these things through Amos and other prophets, God's making it possible for future generations to properly interpret what happened at, when Israel met a demise. Yes, amen. You've, got, you've got to see this. So he's telling Israel what he's going to do. That they're going to go into captivity. He's not going to hear them when they pray. He tells all these things to them. It didn't actually do the people any good because they were, they were so hard. But now in the Babylonian captivity, Daniel said, our fathers sinned. Yeah. Our fathers sinned. Mm -hmm. That's what happened here. Yeah. Nehemiah said the same thing. Ezra said the same thing. They confessed the sins of their fathers, but it's because these texts were written. Yes, amen. If these texts had been written, they couldn't have give, provided an explanation uh -huh. for why they were there in the situation they were in. Daniel said, to us belongeth confusion of face to our kings, to our princes, and to our fathers because, because, because we've sinned against thee. See, that because these books like this were written, that's how they knew this. Again, Jeremiah said, We acknowledge, O Lord, our wickedness and the iniquity of our fathers, for we have sinned against thee. See? Again, Jerusalem remembered, this is... Jeremiah's one of Jeremiah's lamentations. Understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They said these words because these pro these prophets explained that this was all going to be God's God was going to do this. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem remembered in the days of her affliction and of her miseries all the pleasant things she had in the days of old when her people fell into the hand of the enemy and none did help her. The adversaries saw her and did mock at her Sabbaths. See, that's God, through Amos and other prophets, said this is going to happen. So they didn't say we made a mistake, we weren't alert. They had provoked God, and God said what he was going to do, so when he did do it, someone would recognize it. See, for instance, in our day, God has said, in the last days, perilous time, per perilous times shall come. And then he doesn't talk about wars and rumors of wars. That's not what he talks about. Mm -hmm. Men should be lovers of themselves, yes. haters of God, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And then he lists that catalog of sins that are found in the world. Mm -hmm. But these sins were found in the church oh, yeah. that had a form uh -huh. of godliness yes. yeah. but denied the power, of their, yeah. denied being rejected, but denied the power thereof. So when when corruption entered the church, and there was a time in history when this began to really happen, when it was institutionalized, yeah. this began to happen. When corruption entered into the church, it's because the church was being judged. Yes, amen. Hmm? Mm -hmm. The devil's not smart enough yeah. or powerful enough mm -hmm. to intrude into a place that's dominated by God. Yeah. If he is, like in the case of Job, an individual, God has to give him leave to do so. But when this happens to the church, which is the pillar and ground of the truth, these things are written so we'll know why they happened. They happened before the because the church moved out of the safety zone. And he calls for the waters of the sea. That's something else. Can't, it's massive, and it can't be controlled by men. See what he said? He pulled men up out of surface thinking. The fullness of the earth, as Brother Jason stated, the earth is the most stable thing we have. And the most stable thing we have just needs to be touched by God, and that's, it falls apart. Yeah. The sea is another image um, there. Mm -hmm. It's all through Scripture, actually. It says in one of the Psalms, Psalm 65, it says, He stills the roaring of the seas, the tumult of the nations. It's a, it's a picture. It's a, it's a very comforting picture, actually. The, 
This God controls the borders of the oceans. Amen. And the, the picture is, is that the, the nations of the world are like a stormy sea. It says mm -hmm. the wicked are like a stormy sea casting up mire and dirt. Mm -hmm. So what, what this is saying is, in a sense, is that God is, God is in complete control of the wickedness of men. Amen. All, the, the, mm. the, the nations can go so far and they can't go any further, just that's like right. the sea. Come this, this far, that's further. right. Yep. Yeah. And then you have, in the days of his flesh, when Christ walked on the water and spoke peace to the seas. Yeah, that's and right. And the wind and the, and the seas obeyed him. Mm -hmm. now, these, these things were being developed in the mind of man. Mm -hmm. But then when you come over to the, uh, the, the writings of the apostles, there in Hebrews, it says... He upholdeth all things the by the word God. of his power. Yeah. Now you think of God spoke the worlds into existence. Mm -hmm. With a word they were created. And by a word they were upheld. Now these things, they look they look like big to us. But this is nothing to God. That's right. Mm -hmm. Nothing at all. I mean, they're worth... People read this and they're thinking big stuff. Well, it is if you're just a person. They're big compared to you. But they're not big to God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thinking that in Noah's flood, mm. God just spoke to the waters. Okay, you can go over the borders now. <laughs> they couldn't go over the borders before. They could. He said he commanded this far, no further. But in the flood. See, God is in charge of the Amen. waters. Say, go over the borders. Yeah. See, God can command that nothing touch you. Yes. He can. Sometimes this is He renders that this isn't the best thing to do, but uh -huh. He can. He can do that. So are those on the right hand fall, those on the left hand fall, and you're uh -huh. safe. Yes. So the enemy doesn't come nigh. He can do this. He can because God's in charge Amen. of things. <clears throat> then after telling you about this, that He. He governs the earth, and what happens on earth happens under his authority. Nothing happens in the earth that doesn't pass through God and his will. Amen. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as happenstance, yeah. chance, this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. In the heavens, or now we're in a bigger domain still. Right. This, is a, this is still a bigger domain. Man doesn't even have any idea how big this is. God, he governs that too. Uh -huh. He can make a room here and a room there. Yeah. Work out a purpose here, work out a purpose there. The sea, that's all right, that's bigger than man too. But he's in charge of that too. God can make all the elements be against you yeah. as well as all the enemies be against you. He can stop the rain. He can send the famine. He can make the seed rot in the ground. Mm -hmm. This is God. How much sense does it take to oppose this God? What kind of reasoning capacity does a person have who refuses to do what God said? How smart is that person? Well, you may, he may have a high IQ, but he's stupid like an ostrich. He doesn't know God. Then God closes this section by simply saying, the Lord is his name. <laughs> Yeah, there are lords many, but they're, that's not their name. If you're living in England, they have lord so-and-so, but that isn't their their name. That's not their character. <laughs> it's just a title bestowed upon them. But lord is not a title bestowed upon God. Yeah. Lord, now you notice that lord there is all in capital letters. Mm -hmm. That's true in all the versions, too. Mm -hmm. Some versions read Jehovah which is a correct technical translation. The Jerusalem Bible says Adonai, which that's wrong because the word there is not Adonai. Yahweh is his name. Yahweh is, is an acronym for Jehovah. The, the Lord Almighty is his name. And Jehovah the Lord is his name. And God, your God, does all of this, the Message Bible says. <clears throat> There's different words used in different versions for God. There's Adonai, which means my master. 
there's Elohim, which means deity. Jehovah means self-existent or eternal one. When you read the word Lord all in capital letters, it's the, tra it's the translator's translation of Jehovah. And this was the carryover of the Jewish matter. They were, they were afraid to spell the name of God out. So they didn't say Jehovah. They left some letters out because they were afraid they'd be taking God's name in vain. <laughs> well, I wish some of the modern translators had thought that way. So they use capital L, capital letters, all Lord, to stand for Jehovah. And the King James Version in Psalm 68, 4 uses the word Jah, which is an acronym for, or contraction of Jehovah, for Jehovah. The Lord is a name by which, or Jehovah, is the name by which God revealed himself to Moses, and God made a point of telling him this. He said this in Exodus uh, six three, I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, by the name of God Almighty, El Shaddai. But by my name Jehovah, was I not known to them? Now, actually, the name Jehovah is mentioned prior to them, but it, it's a comment. It's not a quote. It's a comment about God. Again, he said, uh, elaborating on that, Jehovah, which I, eternal one, or eternally self-existent one, or eternal one, he said to Moses, when Moses said, who shall I say sent me? Uh -huh. He said, I am that I am. That's an exposition of Jehovah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I am that I am sent you. You t tell him that. Until the time of Moses, God dealt largely with individuals. Here's something else to Abra Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph. But he didn't deal with groups. I mean, you just have to search it out yeah. and see if it's not true. Yeah. But commencing with Abraham, he focuses on a body of people. Through whom he's going to bring the Savior into the world, Amen. through whom he's going to occupy the promised land, through whom he's going to create a culture in which Jesus can be raised. And so now he, he reveals to his name, I am that I am, because to live for God, you, you've got to you've got to know this. Yeah, amen. He that but cometh to God must believe that he yes. is. Yeah. He, not was, is, he is, that's the eternal self-existent one. We don't talk about beginnings when you talk about God. The implication, I want to look at several implications of this name, Jehovah, or the Lord. The Lord is his name. The, the I am that I am. God is that view. First of all, he is dependent upon no one or anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's no personality that can contribute anything to him. Mm -hmm. He's self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. Everyone else has to receive from him. Mm -hmm. When Jesus became a man, he was also was put in receiving mode. Mm -hmm. yeah. He came to earth, he had to receive. Yes. He had to pray. He had to obey. That's right. He had to hear from God. Mm -hmm. See, when he came to earth. It shows you what, what is involved in being on earth. Yeah. <laughs> Just the fact that you're here uh -huh. means you're dependent upon God. Amen. He could be made no more complete than he is right now. Mm -hmm. God never improves yeah. or learns or advances He's absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. Isaiah said, Who has directed the Spirit of the Lord, or being his counselor taught him? Who is it? Let him step forward. Mm -hmm. Anyone has taught God something? Mm -hmm. Step forward. No, no one to this day has stepped forward. That's right. Job said, Shall any teach God knowledge? Therefore Job said to his critics, Why dost thou strive against him? For he giveth not account of any of his matters. 
He doesn't have to, he doesn't have to tell you why he's done anything. That's right. Amen. If he does tell you why, which he does in redemption, it's because he wants to, Amen. not because he has to. Yeah. Second, he speaks with absolute precision. If God is the great I am that I am. And his counsel stands being irreversible. That's one of the implications now of being self-existent and eternal. Therefore, Isaiah said, remember the former things of old, for I'm God. I'm God. There's none else. The things that are not yet done. I declare the beginning from the ancient times and the things that are not yet done, saying my counsels will stand and, and I will do all my pleasure. <laughs> That's only a God can say this. You can't, you're never able to say this. When you first had children, you probably had, you know, these ambitions. You, my children will never. See, but you couldn't carry it out because you're not an I am. You're not an I am. We're a he was. He is. That's a we are. We are. He is. Not an I am. <laughs> Under these circumstances, God divulges what he's going to do, and that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Third uh, implication, in comparison to God, all the inhabitants of the earth add up together to nothing. Yeah. If, if God is who he says he is, then the aggregate of humanity adds up to zero. One time when we uh, were moving here, I think I probably told you this a hundred times, but Ada was, what, 11? We were, in a, Ada rode with me. She told me that her mother told her to ride with me. We moved our stuff in two vehicles so to keep me awake so I didn't fall asleep because I was notorious for driving in my sleep. So she said, I got a question. When Israel was judged by God, two people believed, and over 600,000 didn't believe. And uh, the, the scriptures say that what if some did not believe? She says, why did he call that 600,000 some? Why did, he, why did he call them that? They, they were, I said, well, here's how it is. That an unbeliever count zero. Believers count one. So 600,560 zeros is zero. And two times one is two. So some <laughs> did not believe. Well, that's the way it is. Never, never say that the world is worth a lot to God. You're worth a lot to, don't say that. God's worth a lot to them. God could destroy a world, not shed a tear. See, well, I don't, I don't know if that's true. Who cares what you think about that? That's the way it is. That's the way it is. If, may, if each individual really had incalculable worth to God, if that's true, if that postulate is true, you can't really explain the flood. Yeah, that's right. So don't begin by thinking you're of great value to God. The implications. The fourth implication is all thoughts, words, and deeds that are contradictory to him must be judged and exposed. If God's the I am, if he really is the only self-existent eternal one, then every word, every thought, and every deed must pass under his scrutiny. And last of all, God being who he is, all men must willingly, heartily, and objectively serve him. If that's really who he is, the Lord that's my name. That's my, that's my proper name. That's who I am. You cannot justify speaking or living or doing without him in mind. Yeah, Brother Jason. Yeah, one other implication that 
also draws on the original context there. Mm -hmm. When God, you know, he was sending Moses back to Egypt. You know, Egypt, they had a lot of gods. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. was all the ancient yeah. pagan peoples, they worshipped a lot of gods. Yeah. And almost all these gods were some kind of aspect of creation. That's right. So That's right. When, when God said, I am that I am, this explains why idolatry is wrong. Amen. That's because good. Because all, all idolatry is worshiping some aspect of That's creation, of creation. Mm -hmm. rather than the creator. Amen. But God is I am. He's not an aspect of creation. Amen. That's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, these are things as you dwell on them, they shed a lot of light on other things. You'll notice that. that this is just excellent to dwell upon. So this is the Lord speaking to Israel. They'd heard him for centuries, seven or eight hundred years. They'd heard him. He'd sent his prophets to them in a timely manner. He chastened them in a timely manner, sent plagues among them to convince them of who he was. They'd been exposed to the message of the prophets who spelled things out, warned them ahead of time. But this propensity to idolatry, this lulled them into sleep. Now we've got the same thing today. In some parts of the world, it is image worship still, some parts of the world. Here, men have raised up an intellectual God. Their God is an idea. Yeah, a lot of what's preached today about God is just a human idea. That's all it is. It's, it's not really, it doesn't properly define God. what God does. You know, God would never, this is an idea, human idea. This is not the real God. So there's been false gods raised up. In the church, we're talking about in the church, they've been raised up. Paul would call them another Jesus and another gospel, another spirit. Mm -hmm. they've, they've, they've thought upon the idea of deity. They've merged it with their own mm -hmm. perception, way of thinking, and they've created a God that's like they are. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> that's what they've done. Mm -hmm. Just like the heathen did. Yeah. They made God's like unto themselves. Yeah. But this intellectual God is just like these Material gods, he can't see, speak, touch, walk, handle. He can't do anything. That, I don't know, maybe that's a little too strong. Maybe I should not say this. But the reason the church is powerless is it hasn't got a real God. Yeah, that's right. You have to weigh out what you think about that, but that is my persuasion. Yeah, yeah. My persuasion is God's not in this thing that people call the church. That's why they've got to hire people to straighten it out. That's why they've got to go to the world and learn psychology and this sort of thing. That's why they've got to do that. They've got a powerless God on their hands. Why? Because it's one they made. Now to me, that makes the book of Amos highly relevant. Uh -huh. yes, amen. Because this is telling you how God reacts to that, if that assessment is right. This, this explains a whole lot. Yes. I think we'll close there for tonight. Amen. Yeah, I had a lot of uh, cogitations about this, about this text. I enjoy getting alone with God and thinking. I find myself, I had to forget a lot of stuff I used to think. I kind of have to go through the house and say, well, it, I don't think that's right. I'm going to sweep that out. Got to get the broom now and sweep the house. Got to sweep that out. And now it, it's amazing how much stuff is clung to you that now you see is false, but you didn't you didn't see it before. And sometimes it'll amaze you how this stuff turns up once in a while. Say, whoa! I've been thinking I've been thinking wrong about this. But when you see it, God's blessed you. Amen. 
God's opened the eyes of your understanding so you can see. Because it's hard to abandon something you don't un, you don't see what it really is. Yeah. Yes, brother Jason. It's actually fashionable again to talk about God. Yes, mm -hmm. right. You know, it's, you're right. But see the the scriptures make the scriptures actually make God very specific. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God is the God of Abraham, mm -hmm. the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Israel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's the Father of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. See, now we've now we've made God very specific and definitive. Amen. And this is what our generation does not allow. That's, yeah. right. That's, right. That's right. You can talk about God in any vague generality you want to. Mm -hmm. And in the end, people will just say, well, isn't it nice? You have your version of God, and I have my version mm -hmm. of God. And mm -hmm. Everything's relative, you know. Nothing's absolute. But God is revealed as the absolute. Mm -hmm. That's right. I am. Mm -hmm. he, doesn't, he doesn't say that he's known by different names. Uh -huh. yeah. Like some say Allah's. Mm -hmm. Allah, God, it's the name they, they use for the same God we have known. He said what his name is. That's right. The Lord. Uh -huh. That's my name. Yeah, all I may say is his, but it's my name. Mm -hmm. Yes, Edo. The word of Jonah put, put some teeth, too, in what you're saying here when he said, those who regard worthless idols uh, forsake their own mercy. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mercy with a capital M. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Forsake their own mercy. Mm -hmm. God is our mercy. Amen. The true God is our mercy. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yeah, idols are called vanities. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're like a will of the wisp, you know. Mm -hmm. Anyone else tonight? Yes, Sister Sydney. Just towards the end there, you men uh, mentioned the heathen make gods like unto themselves. And I thought. Uh, well, God is making uh, people like unto Himself. Yeah. And so, it's That's almost, good. It's almost like um, back, the same mistake made back in the um, Garden of Eden. Men are putting themselves in the place of God again. Uh -huh. That's right. Yes, Mother Aaron. I had a couple of thoughts about uh, this world's role in, in redemption. Uh, so much in this text about the earth and the flood and the, the, uh, the elements. Yeah, this everything was made by him and for him. Mm -hmm. So the creation itself is being is being employed, and we have some in, in salvation. I mean, and we have some glimpses of that in in Revelation where the earth helped the woman, mm -hmm. and that's a very like from a very high perspective. It doesn't give us any details, but the 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 creation is is with in, in the control of Jesus in the interest of his people. And that, that's that's good to know. Amen. The, even the creation itself has been subject to vanity, not of its own will, mm -hmm. and so it is actually in this, in a similar state of waiting and hoping, like we are. Amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Sister Barbara. I enjoyed the point that you made that the, the whole point of this revelation to Amos and prophets like this was so that later generations could interpret the work of the Lord, yeah. what was happening. I remember that the scripture, why, why are the scriptures given? It's for our learning. Mm -hmm. But it goes on, it says, so that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. hope. Mm -hmm. right. It's for what's to come. We can, we can continue to look mm -hmm. back and interpret the things that the Lord is doing, but that is intended to give us comfort in looking mm -hmm. ahead to the end of what he's accomplishing. Amen. Yes, amen. Yeah, it's more, it involves more than just escaping. Amen. It involves preparing ourselves That's right. for mm -hmm. the riches of His grace in the Amen. ages to come. Yeah. That's a major insight. You yeah. probably yeah. remember when, like myself, when that dawned on me, that was a major mm -hmm. yeah. insight. That was mm -hmm. just, we escaped yeah. two as well yeah, that's as right. one. Amen. That's real progress. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yes, Brother Roger, yes. It seems like the Father is always trying to remind uh, humanity uh, that his best state is altogether vanity. Yeah, altogether vanity. That's exactly right. Jesus said, "Man at his best state 
he said, uh, the things that are highly esteemed in the sight of men are an abomination in the sight of God. That pretty well establishes uh, how the Father wants us to uh, rearrange and adjust our thinking in uh, his thoughts, in, his, in, his, uh, in, his, in the context of who he is. Because if we don't, we're, we're lost from, from the beginning. We, we don't, we don't like, like you were stating in the first, brother, that about, you know, about getting our bearings. We must first get our bearings, and then we go from there. So I appreciate that. Amen. 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 Praise God. And it's not all that bad when you see yourself as you really are, because then, then you see your need of the Lord, and the Lord's very present help. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have something happen? Oh, Okay, let's have a word of prayer. Oh, go ahead, Sister Logan. I appreciated this, what you touched mm -hmm. on, how nothing happens on the earth that doesn't pass through God's will. Uh -huh. and I couldn't ha help but consider our prayer session that we had this evening, especially mm -hmm. pertaining to these believers that are persecuted. Mm -hmm. And I've been addressed several times by people saying, why, why would God let something like this happen? But this is the wrong response. Yeah. We're not supposed to question God. We're supposed to learn his true righteousness. Amen. And mm -hmm. that, it puts us in a mindset believing that to where it kind of purges any erroneous thinkings that we have. Mm -hmm. That our way is, mm -hmm. our way of thinking is actually clear. Mm -hmm. Where we don't, we're satisfied with not knowing the exact answer, but knowing that God truly is. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very good. It's very, very similar good. Uh, to what Brother Roger was saying. Why would God let this happen to good people? Well, what is man in his best state? Yeah. All together, baby. <laughs> and yeah. So with that frame of mind, uh -huh. that's the mind we need to pursue. It's like, okay, I'm not sure why God is doing this, but everything's under his control, and he's going to look out for his uh, people. Amen. 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 There's a difference between why and why. Mm -hmm. It's not a challenge. It isn't oh, yeah. bringing God into account. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Saying, why did you do that? Or why did you do that? People do that. Mm -hmm. How come How come God did this? How come God did that? And it's an accusation against God. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be judged for that. Yes. Because they're judging God. Yeah. But on the other hand, whenever we see what God is doing in the earth, it's profitable for us to consider these things mm -hmm. and to learn, to be instructed. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, God does God does not uh, condemn when a person wants to know God and see Him in it. Mm -hmm. All the while justifying God, knowing that all of His works are done in righteousness. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Yes, well, you have a Ricky, uh, Jeremy. Uh, even though people are like, why did God do this? He does everything for a reason and a good reason. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Jonathan. Yeah, throughout this book we hear about calamities God's going to bring about because of the people departing from him. Like that's what brought it. I mean there is suffering for well doing, there's suffering for evil too. And I notice it is fashionable in our time when calamity strikes you like, well where was God? That's like a thing going around. Where was God when that happened? Well in light of our passage, perhaps the question people should be asking is, where was I? Or where were you when that happened? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> like, were you in the boundaries of God's grace and mercy? Like, perhaps they, they're looking at the wrong person. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> All right. How do you have any father? We're, we're grateful for the revelation that you've given through Christ Jesus and how you have clarified yourself primarily. And in thy light, we see light. And we express our gratitude now, Father, for your marvelous mercy in all of these things. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.